Welcome to this presentation on building community awareness on suicide and suicide prevention. The World Health Organization recognizes community-based initiatives as playing an important role in preventing suicide. By understanding some basic information on suicide, you will become an important resource in your community to help keep people safe. The purpose of this presentation is to bring more awareness what community members can do to reduce suicide in their communities. As well, we would like to introduce you to our online resource hub, which has many free resources to help you build capacity in your community. After this presentation, you will develop a better understanding about suicide and reduce the stigma around suicide. We will review some common misunderstandings about suicide, as well as determine what we need to know about suicide. We will then talk about what we can do to prevent suicide from, by identifying suicidal thoughts and how to respond. If you or a friend require immediate help, we provide some toll-free numbers at the end of this presentation. We will finish this presentation by introducing you to the CAST Hub and what you can do to continue your efforts to reduce suicide in your community. The Community is Addressing Suicide Together, CAS program was launched into September 2006 is an example of a CMHA Nova Scotia project that works with communities to help prevent suicide. This initiative is funded by the Nova Scotia Department of Health and Wellness and seeks to build and strengthen capacity to address suicide at a local level. The CAST Hub is an online resource hub that provides numerous free resources to help communities build their capacity to reduce suicide. As well, this presentation helps build understanding about suicide and what we can do to prevent it. What is suicide? Suicide means that someone ends their life on purpose. However, people who die by suicide or attempt suicide may not really want to end their life. Suicide may seem like the only way to deal with difficult feelings or situations. Myths around suicide. Stigma is when someone views you in a negative way because you have a distinguishing characteristic or personal trait that's thought to be or actually is a disadvantage, a negative stereotype. There can be a lot of stigma around suicide, which leads us to avoid having the conversations that would otherwise help a person in need. Some of the common myths that help create stigma around suicide include talking about suicide does not make suicide happen. If someone is thinking about suicide, talking about it can help them relieve some tension as well as help you under, better understand their mindset. When someone talks about suicide, they should be taken seriously. It takes a lot of courage to say something and they may be looking for help. Similarly, when people talk about suicide, they are not seeking attention. People who die by suicide usually say something before it happens. Although you may not see why someone would have suicidal thoughts, they are often in pain. Even if they are smart, beautiful, well off financially, or any other measure of success, the pain they feel is real to them. Even though suicide occurs around the holidays can be very difficult, suicide can occur any time throughout the year. Suicides are more likely to peak during the spring. What we know. Although women are more likely to attempt suicide, men are more often complete completing suicide. Men in their 40s and 50s have the highest rates of suicide and are three times more likely to die by suicide than women. Often when someone has attempted suicide, they will try again. However, this does not mean that they necessarily want to die, but rather just want the pain to end and do not see any other alternatives. It is important to become familiar with the signs so that we are able to identify alternatives and seek help. Suicide in Canada. Let's talk about what suicide looks like in Canada. You may be surprised to learn that 10 people die each day by suicide, and it is the ninth leading cause of death in Canada. Consequently, 7 to 10 people are significantly affected by the loss of a loved one to suicide. Certain populations are more vulnerable, including LGBTQ communities and Aboriginal communities. Let's take a look at some information specifically based on Nova Scotia. This chart reflects what we know about suicide in 2000, 
2017 to 2016. The graph tells us the number of suicides occurred within different age groups along the bottom, with males represented by blue and females by green in the bars. Here's what we know about suicide in Nova Scotia. 1,124 Nova Scotians lost their lives to suicide, an average of 112 per year during this time period. Suicide rates fluctuate each year, but the overall trend is upward. The majority of suicides, 77%, were by males, with 23% of suicides by females. However, in an earlier 10-year period, 1994 to 2004, only 16% of suicides were by females, so more women were completing suicide then. Now than then, 65% of suicides occurred in urban areas compared to 35% of suicides in rural areas. The following populations had the highest rates of suicide. Individuals between the ages of 45 to 59 years, males across all age groups except for 10 to 14 years, individuals with an annual income of 30,000 or less. While rates are highest among those with higher educational attainment, actual number of deaths are highest among those with no certificate, diploma, or degree. The most commonly used method of suicide is hanging, strangulation, suffocation, suffocation followed by poisoning or firearms for men, and poisoning and drowning or submersion for women. This is important to note because one way we can reduce suicide is restricting access to means. 68% of those who died by suicide had a diagnosed mental illness in the two years prior to their death. In that group, anxiety and depression were the most prevalent conditions. Next, we'll talk about suicide attempts. Although the number of completed suicides is alarming, even more people attempt suicide. This information is based on data collected between 2011 and 2016. The graph tells us the rate of suicide attempts per 100,000 population that occurred within different age groups along the bottom, and males are represented by blue and females by green in the bars. 13,746 Nova Scotians attempted suicide. 2,979 were then hospitalized during this period. Attempts were more common among males, but hospitalizations for attempts were more common among females. 75% of suicide attempts occurred in urban areas, compared to 25% in rural areas. The population with the highest rates of suicide attempts were individuals over the age of 80, followed by those aged between 45 and 49 years. However, the number of attempts were highest for those 50 to 54 years old, individuals with an annual income of 30000 or less, and individuals with higher educational attainment, however, actual numbers of attempts are highest among those with no certificate, diploma, or degree. Many people who have attempted suicide will not be hospitalized, which is why it's important that members of our communities know how to respond to suicide. What is suicide prevention? Suicide prevention focuses on ways we can reduce the number of deaths by suicide. Increasing awareness about suicide and reducing stigma helps people who are experiencing suicidal thoughts seek help as well as help others know when someone needs help. Talking with someone who is experiencing suicidal thoughts can be overwhelming. Knowing what to do if you or someone you know experiences thoughts or behaviors associated with suicide can help you prepare if you are in that situation. It's having the skills and awareness needed before someone is in crisis. In preventing suicide, intervention and post prevention are components towards the goals of reducing suicide. Who is at risk? Suicide is a complicated issue. People who die by suicide or attempt suicide usually feel overwhelmed, hopeless, helpless, desperate, and alone. In some rare cases, people who experience psychosis, losing touch with reality, may hear voices that tell them to end their life. Overall, anyone can be at risk for suicide. Some of the circumstances that may increase risk include, but are not limited to, individuals living with poor mental health and mental illness like depression, PTSD, bipolar, schizophrenia, etc. People with physical illnesses like cancer or who are paralyzed and feel like a burden. Losses like the loss of a loved one or a job. People who have suffered physical or emotional abuse either in the past or currently. People experiencing social isolation, legal troubles, or struggling financially. Teens, especially those who struggle with their sexual identity, often contemplate suicide 
or older adults who have families who are secretly gay and contemplate suicide. It is important to understand that many individuals can experience these life circumstances and not be at risk of suicide. However, a combination of these factors demonstrate a need to pay attention to in case warning signs begin. While we often think of suicide in relation to depression, anxiety, and substance use of problems, substance use of problems, any mental illness may increase the risk of suicide. It is also important to remember that suicide may not be related to any mental illness. Anyone can be at risk. Suicide, how to help. We often think of helping someone who may be at risk of suicide as an extraordinary act or that it requires some specific professional credentials or experience. While some people are mental health professionals, a large majority of individuals are caring, fam friends, family, coworkers, classmates, peers, teammates, community members, or acquaintances. Some may even be strangers. We don't need to be professionals to equip ourselves with some basic information which can give us the tools to help someone else in need. Helping does not mean offering solutions or counseling the person. You are there to provide support and connect the person to help to the help they need. If you are concerned that someone you know may be thinking of suicide, you can help. Remember, as a helper, you do not promise to do anything you do not want to do or that you cannot do. First of all, if the person is actively suicidal, get help immediately. Call your local crisis service or the police or take the person to the emergency room at your local hospital. Do not leave the person alone. If the person has attempted suicide and needs medical attention, call 911 or your local emergency numbers. Here is an easy way to remember the steps when trying to help someone who may be at risk of suicide. C. Signs and symptoms. Observe the person and verify what you gather. Ask. Share your concerns and ask directly and clearly about suicide. Find out more. Let the person at risk speak without interruption. Listen. Show respect and do your best to be non-judgmental. Determine the risk. Encourage. Establish a connection with them. Reach out and show you care. Encourage the person to seek additional help and connect with others. I will now walk you through each of these steps. Seeing the signs. The first step is seeing the signs of suicide. This could include changes in the person's actions and or behaviors, such as previous suicide attempts, withdrawing or socially isolating oneself may indicate something being wrong or possible mental health concerns, risk-taking behaviors, physically or sexually, or getting in trouble with the law, substance misuse, alcohol or drugs, discussing the topic of suicide, giving away vulnerable or meaningful possessions, decreasing their personal care. You may also notice that a person is talking in a concerning way, such as discussing the subject of death, expressions of helplessness, hopelessness, guilt, or worry, verbalizing giving up such things, giving up such things as nothing will work out anyways, I don't need these things anymore, I can't do anything right, there's no point in trying, everyone is better off without me. Changes in mood, thoughts, and feelings can also indicate that a person needs help. Sadness, hopelessness, helplessness, desperation, worthlessness, loneliness, isolation, guilt, anger, frustration, distress, or being worried. Watch out for sudden boosts of mood. Often when we see someone with a sudden improvement in mood, it may be misinterpreted to them being all of a sudden happy, fine, and no longer at risk. This is actually a significant warning sign of suicide. Lastly, discuss life experiences and circumstances can also impact a person's feelings and willingness to will. The person has been exposed to or survived abuse, or the person has experienced a loss, such as low self-esteem, a relationship, family member, or, or friend, deteriorating health, diagnosis of illness, financial hardship, or unemployment. Now that we have covered who is at risk and the warning signs of suicide, where do we go from here? You know this person is at risk and you see a change in their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. What do you do? First, you need to establish a connection with the person and validate what they are feeling, even if they do not agree or understand why they may want to take their own life 
or feel that they have way that they feel. When they talk, verify what you have gathered. For example, I'm hearing that you are really hurting right now, or I can tell that you are really upset. Let them talk without interruption and without judgment. Remember, most people who think about or die by suicide do not actually want to die, but rather want to end their pain and suffering and see suicide as the only way to do this. Determine their risks. Offer assistance and tell someone. Do not feel that you have to keep this a secret. Ask them for behavioral physical ask for those behavioral physical changes and feelings. The more that you can find out from them, the more you will know about the severity and will know how to help them. If they have family or friends with them, ask them the same questions. Exploring helps us have a better understanding of the risk. Let them know that you are concerned. Describe the feelings that you have noticed, behaviors, moods, and emotions that give you concern, that they may be thinking about suicide. If the person is at risk, ask, are you thinking about suicide? If you can't bring yourself to ask, find someone who can. If they have, ask if they have ever attempted suicide before and now. Ask the, if, them if they have thought about how they would want to take their own lives and when they would do it. Determine the severity at this point. Tell the person that you care about them. They need to feel that you don't, won't judge their thoughts, feelings, or behaviors. Find out more. Be open to listen without judgment is critical when helping someone with suicidal thoughts. You can do this by letting them know by letting the person know that you will speak without interruption and paying attention to the actions of the person contemplating suicide. Active listening can help you know what to do next. By repeating back what you are hearing the person say, they will hear their thoughts about dying and living spoken out loud. This can help the person feel heard, which can reduce the intensity of emotion and distress. It can be hard to know what to say when someone is talking about suicide. Some of the things to avoid are vocabulary, like that's crazy talk, minimizing, such as, oh, come on, things aren't so bad. It sounds like it's as though you're just a bit worried. Cheerleading, I'm sure you're a strong person. You can get through this. Hang in there. Things will blow over. Being judgmental. It really isn't helpful to get so upset or angry. Suicide, that's a stupid way to solve your problems. Advice, I think you should. Promises, everything will be will work out okay. And problem solving, we'll get you a job and everything will be fine. The next step is to encourage. Once you have a better understanding of how the person is feeling, and the severity of their suicidal thoughts, you'd encourage them to seek out more appropriate resources. Encourage them to connect to community resources, support networks, and emergency services if necessary. Make a contract with the person that you will be there for them if they are thinking of a suicide, who they are to contact first, and when to contact you. You can be confident for, for you can be a confident confidant for someone. But if you suspect their life is at risk, you cannot keep it a secret. You may risk your relationship with them, but it is for their own good. If you are unsure what to do, you need to get help. Do not leave them alone if you believe that they are at risk. Take them to the take them for professional help, such as a social worker, counselor, psychologist, nurse, physician, or spiritual counselor. You should reduce or remove access to means such as removing pills, but never put yourself at risk. Always be honest. When someone is in, not in crisis, you should let them know that you will still be supportive of them and be there with them. Encourage positive coping skills such as connecting to family and friends, exercise, connecting to nature. Spend time with them and include them. Do things with them in, instead of telling them what to do. Remain non-judgmental. Invite their friends to your home and get to know them. Reinforce positive steps. Model care for yourself and positive choices. Have a crisis plan in place in case this person's suicidal thoughts become more frequent. When someone is in a crisis, it can be very difficult to solve a problem.
Perhaps this presentation has made you more aware of your feelings and the need to get help. If you're experiencing suicidal thoughts, please call a crisis line or support helpline. Talk to a family talk to a family member or friend that you trust. There's also self-help groups if you're not ready to share with loved ones. Self-help groups can relate to how you're feeling. Others in your community may also have a lived experience. Talking with someone who has learned to manage their mental health may help you learn what to do. Talk to your family doctor or mental health professional. If possible, request telephone support between visits. If you do not have professional support, then go to the emergency room at your hospital. Avoid making major decisions, which you may later regret. Find someone to talk to with talk to first can help you through difficult times. If you are in crisis, there are people you can talk to right away and will help you get the support you need. There are also a number of helplines that are toll free and accessible 24 seven. There's 911 emergency services, the Mental Health Mobile Crisis Team at 902-429-8167 or 1-888-429-8167, Kids Help Phone at 1-800-668-6868, Crisis Service Canada at 1-833-456-4566 or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline 1-800-273-8255. When someone is experiencing suicidal thoughts, it is important that they know that they are not alone and be able to reach out for help. Every community is different, so please take some time to research the supports that exist in your community. Please check out the CMHA Nova Scotia CAST program community-based suicide prevention resource hub, which has a variety of resources, toolkits, and information. You can narrow your search by looking for information on specific groups such as youth, older adults, LBGTQ, Aboriginal and more, or you can also find information for different settings such as schools, workplaces, and emergency services. This website is easy to navigate and there are new resources continuing to be added. We also have another resource hub that is specifically designed for women of childbearing age. This hub has fact sheets, toolkits, and other information to help support women's mental health as they try to start a family, experiencing postpartum, or the loss of a child. If you're interested in further building your resources and understanding how you can help your community, you can visit the CMHA Nova Scotia website for information, www.novascotia.cmha.ca, on training opportunities, or visit the CAST Hub for a variety of resources and toolkits to continue building your community's capacity to reduce suicide. Thank you for your, for your time today. Please check out the CMHA Nova Scotia CAS Community-Based Suicide Prevention Resource Hub for more information on suicide prevention.